It's over in Las Vegas. Mike Tyson, who was down on the ESPN card through four rounds. He had a point docked in round two from uh, the referee for excessive clutching, but he defeats Francois Botha, a knockout in the fifth round. Mike Tyson winning it in Las Vegas. It just went over as Tyson was down on our ESPN card. He had lost on our ESPN card on each of the first four rounds, but he comes back and knocks both of down, the knockout in the fifth round. So Tyson is now 46 and 3 in his career with 40 knockouts. We'll have much more from Las Vegas in moments. Continue. 18 months after being disqualified for biting a vendor Holyfield's ears, a foul filled comeback bout for Iron Mike Tyson. Brian Kenny along with Al Bernstein and John Saracino. The fight is all over. And a stunning conclusion. We had Mike Tyson losing every single round before a right hand knocked out Francois Botha. One single right hand knockout for Mike Tyson in the fifth round. A stunning fight. And Tyson actually wins after he looked like he was going to lose this fight. It was not a good performance for Mike Tyson. It, the ring rust was uh, all over him. He didn't do any of the things that Tommy Brooks and he had worked on. And Franz Botha was dominating most of this fight, I thought. But Mike Tyson, who is a puncher, had a, used the big punch to get the win. And, of course, Al... Uh, th his opponent, Francois Botha, did everything to perfection. He followed the game plan of Panama Lewis perfectly. He roughed up Tyson on the inside. He used a jab, gave him a little lateral movement. When Tyson would bum rush him, he would hold him, rough him up on the inside, and really had Tyson going throughout the whole fight. Al just stunning in all the fouls. This thing. We thought it could be even stopped after round one, where it appeared that Mike Tyson had an elbow lock on Francois Botha. Looked like he was trying to break that arm. Richard Steele had to step in at one point mark ratner and the head of the uh, nevada state athletic commission got together it looked like it could be all over right then very very ugly fight it was really surrealistic and astonishing that in the very beginning of a fight after of course the foul ended his fight with holyfield there was no question both men used a lot of illegal tactics in this fight probably tyson moore and he did get an arm lock on friends both and and really looked like he was trying to injure both both complained about it then went about his business and was doing quite well until that fatal fifth round well, let's try to illustrate this for you take a look at some of the stills of early round action at the very beginning mike tyson coming into the bout he looked a little nervous but friends both also looked a little bit nervous pick it up in round one mike tyson very aggressive early but al he was tired of that jab he really didn't throw the jab after this and very sloppy early on that picture you're seeing is one of the very few times you could have that picture tyson putting out a jab he jabbed almost not at all through the first round instead he lunged in a lot as in this picture and franz Botha was able to land many lead right hands and also some uppercuts as well the balance of tyson wasn't good here's where we started to get the problem with Tyson locking on to both his arm and Richard Steele having a very difficult time breaking the two fighters and they kept punching and John this led to the problem in round two. Well by the second round Steele is going to deduct a point we, as we see the action here at the end of the first round the rough stuff Richard Steele trying to break the two fighters up arm locked and you see a bit of a, a scuffle in the ring as both corners rush in to try to help Richard Steele almost reminiscent of the Holyfield fight when things just tore loose in the ring and Richard Steele restored order. It would have been an awful thing if they had just stopped it right there. As we were saying here, John, just fight. But it got uglier even in the second round. You mentioned deducting one point for Mike Tyson. Richard Steele doing a pretty good job. Took that point away. That was where he took the point away from Tyson. And of course, Richard Steele, uh, some people perceive him as a pro-Tyson referee because he stopped the Ruddock-Tyson fight. He wanted to demonstrate that he was fair. I thought he did that. He refereed very well, by the way, in this match. Mike Tyson defeats Francois Botha via knockout in the fifth round. Again, according to our scorecards, our unofficial scorecards, Al, you included, we had Francois Botha winning every single round until that one hard right hand that knocked him down. Take a look. And now, even a 10-8 round in the second round because of that point deduction. Yeah, as you can see, yeah, that's the official scorecards there, and uh, our, unofficial, our unofficial scorecard, excuse me. And, we, of course, we had both the winning consistently through every round. And Tyson was doing very little offensively, and that's the reason. Just stunning in that how technically poor Mike Tyson was, but he still had the power. One shot, as Howard Gosell would say, one shot right there, and he knocked him out. Still has that power, John. Tyson certainly has power. He can punch, no doubt about it. But can Mike Tyson fight anymore? 
From what we saw tonight, Mike Tyson looks washed up as a heavyweight in terms of being in that upper echelon of the division. Can Mike Tyson beat 9 out of 10 heavyweights? Probably. Can he beat the top 10% he needs to beat? He's very iffy at this point. We've got to remember, the guy he beat tonight was a very ordinary heavyweight. He really only knocked, he only faced two guys that were ranked in the top 10 before. Mike Tyson, a knockout winner tonight on Francois Botha. That's it for right now in Las Vegas. We'll be back. Let's send it back to Sports Center. All right, guys, thanks. We'll see you in a little bit. And kudos to you, Brian Kenny, who said on the early Sports Center, Tyson within five rounds. Again, in case you're just joining us, Mike Tyson defeats Francois Botha, a knockout with 10 seconds left in the fifth round. Botha had the fight through the first four rounds. Tyson came through, landed a thunderous right, a bomb, and that put Botha down. Complete coverage is coming up in just a little bit. We'll take you back to Vegas. Another wild night in Las Vegas. Mike Tyson and Francois Botha. Knockout in the fifth round for Iron Mike Tyson. Hi, everybody. Brian Kenny back here in Las Vegas. Unofficially, we had it 40 to 35. Francois Botha ahead, leading the former undisputed heavyweight champion of the world before the fifth round. In that fifth round, one right hand from Mike Tyson. Down went Botha. That was it. Counted out by Richard Steele. Let's go to Mark Schwartz right now, standing by live with Mike Tyson. We're now joined by Mike Tyson. And Mike, first of all, this fight did not exactly go your way, at least not until the very end. What was your feeling in the first four rounds as you struggled against both of them? Um, does that mean I have character or not? Well, first I'd like to say, um, praise be to Allah. I'd like to give um, happy birthday shouts to Customato. Um, tomorrow his birthday, and I'd like to give um, rest in peace quotes out to my brother Arkbark, LD, and my brother Tweety. I love you. I'll see you in heaven soon. Now, what can I say for you? Mike, what happened in the first round, at the end of the uh, round at the bell, when uh, you and Botha got in an arm lock? It almost looked like you were trying to break his arm there. No, he got rough with me, so I got rough back. What about in the, the, there seemed to be a lot of clutching and grabbing. Obviously, his strategy was to do what Holyfield did to you. How difficult was that for you with a bigger guy clutching and grabbing you? Well, listen, um, I was off two years, and I'm, I'm, I'm rusty. There's no doubt about it. But um, most people would have took a lesser challenger. I came back, and um, thank God, praise be to Allah, I was successful. Tommy Brooks wanted you to come in with a jab, with head movement. He wanted us, you to step around and really box. It didn't seem like you did too much of what Tommy Brooks wanted you to do in this fight. What's your feeling? Um, I did as much as he could tell me. I did as much as I could do that he told me. And I'll get better. I just have to go, listen, I was laid off for two years. What do you expect? We're working on it. We'll get better. It's just the first fight. Was it ring rust, Mike, that affected your performance? Yeah, pretty much. I was pretty much um, a little gun shy and I was a little nervous. What about... Botha. Did he surprise you with his ability to stand in there, take some of your heat, and actually hurt you with some hard right hands? No, no, no. He never hurt me. He never hurt me at all. But he was throwing a lot of punches, and I was a little apprehensive because of lack of um, being in the ring. It was kind of a dirty fight. Both fighters uh, did some things. You were penalized. You had a point deduction in the second round. Did you feel like things were getting out of hand there for a while? No yeah. Problem, um, forgive me, my fans. I'm sorry. Um, forgive me. I'm sorry. Can you beat some of the top heavyweights, Mike? You got past both of which everyone expected. Can you beat a top heavyweight? Well, listen. Um, you tell me. You tell me. I think I'm on the top of the food chain. I just need. Listen. I've been inactive. In all actuality, I've been inactive for five years. Okay, wait, wait. Let him and I'm still competing with the top heavyweights in the world. How many people you know that can do that? But not been in prison, then come out, then forget it. Come on, man. That's not that's not ordinary. That's extraordinary. But nobody gives me respect for that. Praise be to Allah. Allah who Akbar. Allah is great. Mike, thank you for the time. After 567 days out of the ring, Mike Tyson beating Franz Botha. Now back up to Brian Kenny. Mark, thank you very much. If you want to give credit to Mike Tyson, he says, what about character? He did come back with the power, the one shot to knock out Francois Botha, but some very shaky moments early on, Al. There were shaky moments. I thought that was fascinating. Mike Tyson was willing to admit he was a little nervous, a little gun shy, and that the ring rust was such a big issue for him. And I also thought it was fascinating that at the beginning of that interview, of course, he was taking that tack, but uh, at the end, a little feisty about the fact that it would be suggested that he didn't perform as well as he might. And John, that is vintage Mike Tyson. Well, I think we saw all of what's wrong with Mike Tyson. He has trouble with self-control. He's having trouble with self-control in the ring by evidence of what happened here tonight. I think he's having trouble controlling himself, what he wants to do and where he's going as a fighter. And I think that last little bit of flare-up with, with Mike shows that he's still unstable.
We'll have much more here later on when we join up with ESPN2. Right now, we take a break right here on Sports Center. Again, ESPN2 will be back here in Las Vegas. I'm Brian Kenny for John Saracino and Al Bernstein. We'll see you on the Deuce. More Sports Center after this. Mike Tyson and Francois Botha, they are all done. We welcome those who've been watching ESPN2. You're watching ESPN News. Mike Tyson with a fifth round knockout. Francois Botha goes down on one punch. The first time since June of 1997 that Mike Tyson has fought. He improves to 46 and 3 overall. 40 knockouts for him on the career. Botha down to 39 and 2 with 24 KOs. Mark Schwartz had a chance to chat with Iron Mike after the bout in Las Vegas. Now joined by Mike Tyson and Mike first of all this fight did not exactly go your way at least not until the very end what was your feeling in the first four rounds as you struggled against both of them um did it mean I have character or not well first I'd like to say um praise be to our law I'd like to give um happy birthday shouts to Customato um tomorrow his birthday and I'd like to give um rest in peace quotes out to my brother Arkbark LD and my brother Tweety I love you I'll see you in heaven soon now, what can I say for you? Mike, what happened in the first round, at the end of the uh, round at the bell, when uh, you and both had got in an arm lock? It almost looked like you were trying to break his arm there. No, he got rough with me, so I got rough back. What about in the, the, there seemed to be a lot of clutching and grabbing. Obviously, his strategy was to do what Holyfield did to you. How difficult was that for you with a bigger guy clutching and grabbing you? Well, listen, um, I was off two years, and I'm, I'm, I'm rusty. There's no doubt about it. But um, most people would have took a lesser challenger. I came back, and um, thank God, praise be to Allah, I was successful. Tommy Brooks wanted you to come in with a jab, with head movement. He wanted us, you to step around and really box. It didn't seem like you did too much of what Tommy Brooks wanted you to do in this fight. What's your feeling? Um, I did as much as he could tell me. I did as much as I could do that he told me. And I'll get better. I said, listen, I was laid off for two years. What do you expect? We're working on it. We'll get better. It's just the first fight. Was it ring rust, Mike, that affected your performance? Yeah, pretty much. I was pretty much um, a little gun shy and I was a little nervous. What about Botha? Did he surprise you with his ability to stand in there, take some of your heat, and actually hurt you with some hard right hands? No, no, he never hurt me. He never hurt me at all, but he was throwing a lot of punches, and I was a little apprehensive because of lack of um, being in the ring. It was kind of a dirty fight. Both fighters uh, did some things. You were penalized. You had a point deduction in the second round. Did you feel like things were getting out of hand there for a while? No. Yeah. Um, uh, forgive me, my fans. I'm sorry. Um, forgive me. I'm sorry. Can you beat some of the top heavyweights, Mike? You got past both of which everyone expected. Can you beat a top heavyweight? Well, listen. Um, you tell me. You tell me. I think I'm on the top of the food chain. I just need. Listen. I've been inactive. In all actuality, I've been inactive for five years. Okay, wait, wait. Let him and I'm still competing with the top heavyweights in the world. How many people you know that can do that? But not been in prison, then come out, then forget it. Come on, man. That's not that's not ordinary. That's extraordinary. Yes. But nobody gives me respect for that. Well, yeah. Praise be to Allah. Allah who Akbar. Allah is great. Mike, thank you for the time. After 567 days out of the ring, Mike Tyson beating Franz Botha. All right, Mark, good work. Tyson and Botha, it's all done. We'll have more of the reaction after the fight, including more of the post-fight press conference coverage. As you can imagine, could be some fireworks happening there in Vegas, so stay tuned for that. We'll have coverage on ESPN News later this evening. Mike Tyson victorious after climbing back in the ring for the first time in 19 months. He defeats Francois Botha of South Africa, a knockout in the fifth round, one and done. The furious right hand taking Botha out of the fight. Tyson, 46 and three overall, his 40th knockout. Of course, a lot more on this one coming up later on ESPN News. Andrea, thanks. Mike Tyson has knocked out Francois Botha in Las Vegas, as you've heard repeatedly. We go now live press conference coverage from Vegas. Francois Botha approaching the podium. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I will gladly answer all your questions. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask any questions. Uh, you know, Mike, Mike, Mike grabbed my, my arm and he was trying to, to break my arm, you know, like twist my arm. And uh, I was telling the ref, I said, ref, you know, he's trying to break my arm. And he kept on doing that, you know, he kept on uh, trying to twist my arm. And, uh, you know, Mike is a great fighter. Take, take nothing about, away from him, you know, I walked into the punch and uh, 
you know, he's a great fighter. Oh, it's a great opportunity, but I lost. I mean, uh, you know, I wasn't scoring the fight. I was just doing what I know best, and that's to fight. And, uh, you know, I just walked into the punch. I mean, Mike threw a punch, and we all know Mike's got a lot of power. He's probably one of our hardest hitters in boxing. And uh, I just walked into the punch, you know, a, a punch that you don't see. And that's a punch that hurt me. <laughs> Well, you know, I was talking to him and telling him, uh, you know, I, I can't remember everything I said to him, but, you know, I was trying to psych him out, tell him, you know, everybody's watching you, you, you gotta, you gotta start, start fighting because you're losing. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, he just caught me with that punch. I mean, it, it happens in boxing. Uh, Mike Tyson is a great fighter. I mean, you know, look where he came from. And I, I was just happy to get the opportunity to compete against him. Yes, I believe I was. I mean, I was really controlling it real easy and, uh, and uh, you know, I was uh, uh, keeping away from Mike's power and, uh, you know, uh, I let my guard down. I start fooling around too much probably and uh, just walked into the punch. And we know Mike got the power. Mother him and, and stifle him as long as you could. Yeah, you know, Mike, Mike when, when you're close to him, he, he's not a very good inside punch. And when you're close to him, uh, you know, you got a better chance in there because you, you, you show them the, the, the smothering the punch, that's right. And, uh, you know, you just, I mean, what I can, what I can you can take nothing away from Mike, uh, Dan. We're happy to have him back. Uh, I think Mike Tyson will once again go and, and get what he deserves. Thank you very much. Any more questions? Francie, what would be next for you, um, given your performance tonight? Uh, you know, it's, uh, I'm going to talk to, uh, I'm going to talk to my manager, Mr. McPherson, uh, you know, it's, uh, one thing you can say, uh, about me, you know, I've never lost to a bad fighter. I mean, Mike Tyson is a, I, you know, he's one of the greatest heavyweights out there. I really believe that I was in control of a fight until I walked into the punch. Uh... I would like to have a rematch, but you know, there's probably a dozen other people that want that chance and, and hopefully later down my career, you know, I, I'm going to continue. This is just the beginning for me. I'm going to continue fighting. I mean, that's what I know how to do. And uh, hopefully, hopefully later on in my career, I can get another crack at somebody. Brian, did you think you had him in trouble? Did you think you had him in trouble at any point? Yeah, yeah, I was surprised. Uh, I really thought this was going to be easy <laughs> after, after a while. And, uh, you know, but, you know, Mike's got the tremendous power. He's a, he's a strong athlete. And, uh, you know, I got careless. And uh, I just walked into the punch. Did, Franz, did you think you ever had hurt him at any point? You know, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't really say. I know that uh, we were talking to each other. I don't want to say what we both said because uh, I, I don't think you want to hear it. But uh, I knew what I, that I was in control and that uh, I was I was slowly but surely, you know, getting the end of a fight. And uh, you know, unluckily, you know, I, I walked into the punch. Did you feel any kind of fight? Oh. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know, I, I know that, uh, uh, I knew that I had him, I, I caught him with some good shots. I mean, my right hands was landing, and I knew that I was hitting him with my right hands. Uh, it's just, you know, I mean, uh, Mike's a great fighter. I don't want to take nothing away from him. Uh, I fought the best, and uh, later Mike Mikey Ree, you know, I'm still a young chap, and I will get, I will get another shot at it. You know, he was twisting my arm. I mean, he was grabbing my arm and, 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 and twisting my arm. And uh, I told the ref, I said, ref, you know, he's twisting my arm. He's trying to break my arm. And uh, 
you know, we kept, we kept, we kept, we kept bad-mouthing each other. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, he just called me that punch, you know, the punch that you don't see. I, I, I mean, I wanted to land that punch. I told him, I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit him with a phantom punch. <laughs> but, but Mike hit me with a phantom punch first, and, uh, you know, that's boxing. But I'm not finished. You, you know, you'll see a lot of me. Were you surprised by how many punches he missed and how, how much rust he looked like he had? Oh, yes, definitely. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I, I, expect, I ex really expected more. But, you know, Mike Tyson is a great fighter. At the end of round one, did Richard Steele come to the corner and issue any kind of warning? What exactly was said then? Yeah, he said that uh, you can't retaliate. Let, if Tyson was going to do what he was going to do, don't retaliate because he'd have to deduct against both the two. And I tried to calm Francois down and told him not to retaliate and just fight his fight. Tyson was trying to get him out of his fight game. That's, that's what I thought he was trying to do. There with the commissioner in the ring and police there that, that, that the fight could have come to a premature, some kind of ending right away? Well, no, I thought that they were, they jumped in the ring at the right time and they started to handle it and they got it calmed down pretty quickly. So it wasn't a big deal. I wasn't worried about it. No, it's not true, you know, it's, uh, I was like uh, making Mike Miss and uh, just avoiding some of the, the big punches that he threw, you know. I was, uh, I was, I w you know, my breathing was pretty good, and I felt that, you know, slowly but surely, I was like winning the fight. Come on. You know, like I say, we 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 really uh, said some bad words to each other in there. And, uh, you know, Mike's a, you know, he's a great fighter, and, you know, I knew he had the punch. I just got careless. I mean, I really got careless, and uh, I knew I was winning the fight. I was really, I, I know I was, a, was winning this fight, and uh, it showed you you can't get careless. And I, I did that, and I paid dearly for that. Francois, you seem to settle things fairly um, amicably afterwards. Uh, is, is that right, the way we saw it? Excuse me, can you repeat that? You seem to settle things fairly nicely with Tyson after the fight. No hard feelings? No. Oh, no, I mean, you know, this is a, this is a sport, uh, well, it's a career, but, I mean, you know, one day you win, one day you lose. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, I could have, I, I might, as just, well, might as well just have landed the sponge, you know, and Tyson wouldn't have gotten up. I mean, it could have been me, but, you know, luckily for Tyson, it was him. One, one, one compliment that Mike Tyson made, maybe you guys didn't get a chance to hear it, was when he came to both after the fight, he uh, said to both, he said, I know you read a lot of things in the paper that I was a racist. He said, I don't have a racist bone in my body, and I love you, Francois, and you fought a great fight, and I think you're a great fighter. Good, good. What? Did I expect more from Tyson? You know, I fight everything he tried to do. No, you know, he really, I mean, you know, Mike really, uh, you know, he's a great fighter. I, I didn't, I, well, you know, I can't, you know, it's hard to answer that question because, uh, I mean, he's coming out, he's always coming out and throwing, throwing punches, trying to take you out of a shot. Uh, he, he, you know, I, I probably uh, made him miss quite a few times. I thought I was well ahead, you know, was well in control. Maybe I got a little too cocky and, you know, I paid for it. All right, any, any other questions? Right over there, yeah. Oh, that's Jeff. Were you happy with my performance? Until he got killers, you know. If he didn't uh, drop his hands, I would be whistling Dixie tonight, you know. But I can't take none away from him, you know. He was sticking to his game plan until he found out that Tyson couldn't hurt him, you know. So he started to get too khaki and, you know, and he paid for it. Say that again. Excuse me. Oh, definitely, you know, uh, you know, there's always going to be, before a fight, there's always going to be aggressiveness, you know, among people. I mean, you're trying to psych each other out trying to uh, be in control of a mind game. 
and you say bad things to each other. I mean, uh, but, but, but this is such a great, great uh, sport and career that afterwards we'll all be friends again. Is that it? Is that it? Well, speak up. Oh, yes, definitely. I'm not going to take nothing away from uh, Axel Schultz. Uh, I mean, I think he's got a great chance. Uh, I mean, you know, everybody deserves a shot and be able to prove himself. And, you know, Mike Tyson is back. And, uh, I, I mean, there's a lot of fighters out there. We're happy to have him back in the heavyweight division. And uh, because he's, he's helping a lot of heavyweights out there to make a living. I think it, I think it should be known now that uh, I'm sitting with my advisor, Frank Warren, and... Uh, we're going to uh, give Francois some time off, and we're going to challenge the winner of Herbie Hyde and Olin Norris on February the 13th. Both is going to challenge the winner of that fight for the WBO Heavyweight Championship. I think he deserves the right to fight for the Heavyweight Championship of the world. You tell me. Thank you, thank you. Anybody else? Uh, amateurs, yes. In the amateurs, uh, I always got up. Uh, I mean, this was a punch that I didn't see, you know, but, you know, I've never been knocked out in my life, though. I've always gotten up. I think my heart, I got a great heart. I always come back. Uh, it's just a punch that I didn't see, you know, and that was a punch that I wanted to land. I always said I'm going to hit Mike with a phantom punch, and uh, he, he landed it first. So, uh, take nothing away from Mike. We're happy he's back. I was asking if, if this is all that I have. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's a lot of things that I said. I didn't want to get in all of it. You know, Mike, we were really bad-mouthing each other like we do in boxing, but I don't want to really get in, into that. But uh, I thought I was doing well until, you know, he caught me. So I always thought I could take a good punch, but Mike's a big puncher. I, I believe it was a punch. Uh, we never clashed heads. Uh, I, I don't know if Mike maybe will say differently, but I, I would believe it was a punch. Uh, maybe Mike, Mike will say no, it was heads, but I, I, I couldn't, I really can't remember. No, I mean, uh, basically what I was doing is really was just like pulling my arm, trying to Try, trying to break my arm. Uh, you know, what can I say? He's a great fighter. I don't want to take nothing away from him. Come on. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. Uh, there's, a, there's a South African here. Maybe he can stand up and tell you what, what, what South Africa would feel about my performance. Uh, he, a, a All mic. very proud of him. Absolutely. Uh, the country was rooting for you. The fight went out at 6.30 a.m. this morning. And uh, huge, huge uh, support for you, Francois. And you did us proud. Hey, not only in South Africa, all around the world. Because, Francois, you put up wow. one great fight tonight. You, ha you, you were out there giving it everything you had. And quite frankly, you were in the fight. So, wow. you know, this is only going to do greater things for your career. And as Sterling and Frank Warren has said, I think challenging for the heavyweight title, you deserve your opportunity. Francois, wanted, both a tremendous job. I want to tell you. <laughs> Thank you. I wanted to tell you that uh, yesterday I received a fax from uh, Nelson Mandela wishing Francois well, also wishing Mike Tyson well, and I'm going to give a copy of that to Shelly uh, Finkel uh, sometime this week when I see him again. Uh, but the letter uh, indicated that he hoped to watch the fight. It was unfortunate he couldn't attend the fight because of prior engagements, but he really was interested in uh, seeing Tyson in both the fight, in, in live and in person. Thank you. Panama? Yes. Uh, Panama, where were you, and did you communicate with uh, Bofa at all? 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was uh, about five rows back. But, you know, I, I have a big mouth, you know. You could ask do. He could tell you. <laughs> what, what did you tell him? Keep sticking the job and catch him coming in and step around, overhand right, you know, things like that. Did he hear you? Francois. Did you, oh. Francois, did you hear inst any instructions from uh, Panama? Yes, yes, I did. Uh, I mean, Panama was close to ringside. I could hear the, the information that he gave me and uh, keep sticking the jab. I mean, I was really moving well and, 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 and Tyson had a hard time getting to me, you know, and, uh, you know, that's boxing. Hopefully, uh, you know, I, I, I'm still a young chap and I will be back continue my career and hopefully you know i can get another crack at it but you know like i say we're happy that mike is back uh, i know there's a lot of heavyweights out there who want to get a crack at him and 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 he's good for boxing because we we can all make a living with mike being around this was tremendous for boxing that not only have mike tyson back to have such a great fight here tonight at the mgm um budweiser showtime set we got to thank them all because they all made this thing possible sitting here in the front row Jeff Wald, I'd like to acknowledge Irving Azoff. You guys did a tremendous job with all of this. Thank all the fans and media out here. Mike's going to be here in a few minutes. He's getting his eyes stitched up right now. So he should be in here uh, momentarily. Any other questions to um, Francois? Folks, you were listening to promoter Dan Goosen right there. And as you heard, Mike Tyson will be out getting his eyes stitched out right now. Andre Aldridge here in the ESPN newsroom. We're going to take a brief time out. Coming back with more in a moment. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to your continuing source for sports news. This is ESPN News. I'm Andre Aldridge, and we've got all kinds of tasty treats on our plate this half hour. Now, you folks with us on the Deuce, we'll be taking you back to Las Vegas when Mike Tyson comes out in a couple of minutes. Right now, we want to continue with the rest of today's sports news, and we will start, indeed, with the fight news. Now, while training for his comeback fight with Francois Botha, Mike Tyson thanked his trainer, Tommy Brooks, for making boxing fun again. Now, since it had been 19 months since his last fight against Evander Holyfield, boxing fans weren't concerned with the happiness quotient of the former champ. They wanted to know if he could still fight. And was it worth 45 bucks on pay-per-view? Well, we can tell you this, folks. Mike Tyson indeed beats Francois Botha. Fifth round knockout there. Although on each judge's scorecard, Francois Botha was uh, in charge or uh, leading, although the only thing that mattered was that powerful right hand coming for the champ. And it's the first win for Mike Tyson since September 7, 1996, when he beat Bruce Seldon. $10 million goes to uh, Iron Mike in this one. Botha got 1.85 for uh, giving up his face there at the very end of the fifth round. So again, Mike Tyson wins, and we will take you back out to Las Vegas as soon as Iron Mike comes out from getting his eye uh, stitched up. And uh, we can also tell you a little bit more about this uh, fight. Uh, Tyson takes care of it and improves his all-time record in non-title bouts to 34-0 with 30 knockouts, including 17 of the first round variety. He did this one in the fifth tonight, though. These 34 bouts have lasted an average of just 3.1 rounds. When a belt is on the line, Tyson is 12 and 3 with 10 knockouts. Up ticked in CNN headline sports. Iron Mike is back. After an 18-month layoff, Mike Tyson knocked out France Botha in five rounds. The fight was close until Tyson caught Botha with a hard right, and it was good night for Botha. How many people you know could go in prison, come out and win a title, then take a, um, 18 months, close to two years off, and come back and do sensational against the number two world contender. Can't, can't name any right now. But All right, say that on television. And as you can see, Mike Tyson has just stepped out of the locker room, so we head to Las Vegas and hear what he has to say about the win. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Mike? I'm sure there are plenty. I can't hear you. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it really wasn't a tough fight. He made it tough, you know, until he readjusted. See, boxing is about adjusting, readjusting, readjusting, readjusting. And that's what Mike did.
<laughs> uh, he, had, he had to adjust to get back in the ring after a year and a half. No, he got rough with me. I got rough back. He talked a lot. What did you say? He talked more than I did. What did he say? It's some bad things, real nasty things. <laughs> what did you say? And I said, white boy, I'm going to fucking kill you. <laughs> uh, we, we had spoke earlier today, uh, <laughs> like around... <laughs> Like around one o'clock, and, and and I had told Mike, by knowing Sterling and by knowing Panama, uh, they were gonna try every trick in the book, and uh, <laughs> for him to keep his head straight and don't let him push his buttons. Where did, where did the cut come from? Um, headbutt. Headbutt in round yeah. one. First round. I don't know what round it was. Excuse me? Really think so. Why, thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. I don't know. I, um, I didn't even know I'd do it. Uh, we have been working on that in the gym. Um, as I've been telling Mike all, you know, all along, if, if you're out there, you're looping punches, and you're looking for a knockout, you, you never see the knockout. But if you settle down, you start boxing, using your jab, uh, Getting the guy looking at your jab, they never even see the right hand coming. I just saw him on the floor. I said, "This guy quitting." I didn't know what happened. I thought he was quitting. <laughs> Mike. Exactly, exactly. I don't know. Um, I was a little apprehensive. I was doing slightly a little holding as well, not as much as he was. But I'm just um, praise be to Allah that I'm able to um, be victorious. Mike, can you talk about what you think you have proven here tonight and? Talk a bit about why you seem to be so upset talking with reporters after the bout. Who are you talking to? Who am you. I talking to? You. Wait, wait, who's talking? Right here, Mike. What do you think you proved? What do you think you proved tonight? I don't know. I didn't prove anything. I'm just, I'm just trying. I'm constantly trying to do well. You know, I have a long way to go, but I'm, you know, I've got a new trainer, and we're working on it. Mike, and can I ask you also afterwards, you were, it seemed very upset talking about people assassinating your character. Can you talk about what you were, what you meant by that? Listen, I don't have to explain it. You, you see it. I'm not going to answer my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to answer. Mike, what's Mike, up? Did yes. you realize you were, uh, did you realize you were behind? Behind? On points, scored points. Well, um, I wasn't worried about that. I knew I was going to keep slowing down. I thought it was Tom Tom, I told you. <laughs> he said, I got him with my sights, coach. Just give me some time. I got him with my sights. Did you see that jab tonight? Um, getting my butt back in the gym. Like a two weeks or so, you just get back in the gym and start working, probably a week. Working on the moves and capitalizing on everything I screwed up on tonight. What's up, Jeff Fennick? Lake of Salon. Excuse me? Um, it's just be, what is, be real. Huh? My wife, my wife's the capitalist. <laughs> I'm the socialist. <laughs> I believe we should give it away. She believes we should sell it. <laughs> Jeff Finnick, question. No, I, if you're not a fighter, you, you can't conceive. It's just, um, you're just cool, you're just waiting for the time to come and doing, just make, trying to make things happen, faint, a couple of uh, wow. It's, it's hard to explain if you're not um, a pugilist. It's just a matter of time. You knew it was going to come, you just didn't know when. Mike, why, why did you help prevent both of them? Right here. Excuse me? Why did you prevent both of them from going through the rings? You ran over there and uh, through the ropes. You tried to save him from going out. Well, listen, um, he's a brother. Um, and 
what can I say? You know, this is just, it's not that serious. It's just a boxing match. It's not that serious. But there are, there are some people that I would like to let go through that rope that's not fighters. Mike. 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 Hello. The new strategy in fighting you seems to be that people are tying you up and trying to push you back. And I wanted to know what you're going to employ to try and counter that strategy being used. We're we already working on that. We're, we're way ahead of you, babe. We're already on top of that. Excuse me? I can't hear you, sir. Um, I know he, 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 I don't believe he was able to hurt me. Um, I was just prepared to fight. You know, I did study him before I fought, fought the guy, and I didn't think he was capable of hurting me anyway. I knew I was going to knock him out, but I was in good shape, and I knew it would just be a matter of time. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike, it's good to see you back in the ring. We're wondering if you're going to come back to Phoenix, Arizona and train. If you can't get no love from everybody else in the media here, we got love for you in Phoenix, oh, Arizona. I got love in Phoenix, too. I'm coming back. I'm coming back, definitely. Excuse me? Well, it feels, it feels great to do what I love to do, but um, I, I got um, to improve a lot more. I got a long way to go. Mike? This is Rene from Germany. Would you like to fight uh, Axel Schultz next? Huh? Um, I don't know. I guess so. I'll fight anyone. Do you know Axel Schultz? Do you know him? Not personally, no. Did you see tapes? Well, I think he fought Bolter, right? That's true. Yeah, he won that fight, I thought. I thought he won that fight. <coughs> Things you. happen, you know. But he wouldn't last with me. He'd been knocked out. <laughs> uh, Mike, over here on your right, would you uh, allow Francois Botha a rematch? Or uh, as far as that's concerned, that's all over Red Rover. You think he wants a rematch? I think he was chasing a rematch pr prior to the fight. Yeah, he said that uh, he wanted a rematch. He had it in his contract, and that's what he was chasing. I think that's on, um, in, under the pretense if he would have won, he would have got a rematch. Right. I believe. I don't know much about that's contracts. Right, that's right. So you wouldn't I, waste your time with Francois Botha anymore? Well, I don't know. The price is right. I'll fight a lion. <laughs> Mike. Hey, Mike, over here. C Mike. plus. Mike, C plus. Mike, what, what, what happened at the end of the first round up there? What was going on? I explained to the gentleman. He got rough with me. I got rough back, and we were just getting rough with one another. Michael Katz, how you doing? Did you fart into my face the other night? <laughs> no way. <laughs> That's funny. Excuse me? No, but I heard, you know what I heard. You know you did it. <laughs> <laughs> That's Mike, funny. Uh, That's funny. Both of us doing, uh, both of us doing a lot of hysteromics out there and stepping away and trying to, uh, do little cat games in the ring. Did that, did that bother you? What was he trying to do out there when he was doing that? What did you say? I don't know. I believe he's the white Muhammad Ali. <laughs> <laughs> he's one of like three or four. Mike and I haven't discussed it all. There were some people who wanted to meet now, and I said, let's just wait till this fight's over. After that, we'll talk. Mike, and I haven't spoken when next. You know, we're hopeful in, in April, like 90 days or so, but we haven't even spoken. Oh, there's Vaughn Bean, there's Lou Savarese, so there's Briggs. They're all talking to us. All right, Mike, uh, and, and it's for Tommy also. Uh, not much, you didn't really go to the body that much in the early rounds. Was that a concern at all for you, Tommy, that you weren't really going to the body early? Or did you sorry, think I that didn't one hear you. punch would do it? I'm sorry? Going to the body early on Francois, you didn't seem to really go to the body at all really during the fight just it's not hit for it's my fault yeah well we you know oh, okay. well, we, 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 that, we had worked on that in the gym uh that was that was our fight plan uh to start in the body and work our way up but you know hey when you haven't been in the ring in a long time you got to take what you can get till you feel comfortable doing that 
did you think that one punch would be able to do it? At any no, we've been, we've been working on putting our punches together. But as I tell Mike all the time, uh, when you're looking for a knockout, it's not going to happen. You got to put your punches together. And just like tonight, he didn't even know he hit the guy. You are. Mike? Mike? Yes? Hi. Over here. Okay. Hi. Did you feel uh, um, when uh, Richard Steele took you, took you to the point, a sort of frustration like, uh, here we go again, something, uh, something like you already experienced? Uh, Do you feel that was the time that everybody was expecting you to snap again? No. Um, I knew I was going to win. I wasn't worried. It's been a matter of time. We had 10 long rounds. 10 rounds is very long in there. Also, I think you saw tonight that there was a lot of things done and his composure was more than ever, which a lot of other people might have fought and stuff. He went back to the corner and he was just, that was the best part of it early. Mike, it's me again, Rene from Germany. How important was your new coach, Tommy Brooks, at this time in the corner, the first time? What was that? How important was he for you in, uh, in the corner? Well, um, it was great. We got a great um, repertoire in the gym, and now we got to put that same gym repertoire in the ring, and it's coming along. It just go fight after fight. I mean, every fight gets better, I believe. Mike, well. Evander, Evander Holyfield gets older every day. Do you want a shot at him right now, or do you want a couple of more tune-up fights? Well, I'm not getting any younger either. I'm getting better, though. Mike, Mike, you, uh, Mike, you were talking uh, this week about having four fights and retiring. Is that still something that's in your, yeah, in your oh mind? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So at the end of this year, we won't see Mike Tyson in the ring anymore? If I have four fights, yeah, I'm gone. I hate, no, I hate being under contract with these guys. I've been under contract, I feel like a slave. These people talk shit to you, the, the hotel guys, the television network, and you can't do anything. Aren't you going to miss everything? Huh? Aren't you going to miss it all? Hey, I'm just um, a human being, just time for someone else one day. Volta said you were trying to break his arm. What do you have to say about that? Excuse me? Volta said that you were trying to break his arm. What do you have to say about that? He's correct. <laughs> Tyson. Me, Angel. Hey, champ. How you doing? Good, good. Congratulations to you and the family again. God bless. Uh, basically, it ain't even a boxing question. Excuse me? Basically, it ain't even a boxing question. How do you feel? Um, a little crappy. I could have been better. A little embarrassed. I wasn't. I wanted to shine tonight. You know, I'm, it just takes time. It takes time. Rome wasn't built in a day. Because if I was fighting, if I was fighting somebody like that, he would have been out. If I was fighting Mike Tyson, and he was fighting like that, he would have been through. So I didn't feel too good. Yes. All right, good. All right, listen, I want to thank uh, again Showtime SET, MGM, Shelly Finkel, Mike Tyson, uh, Budweiser, everyone, thank you. Mike? All right, folks, obviously live television there. We hope we haven't offended anyone. Uh, you folks on the deuce, you're going back to regular programming, and everybody else on ESPN News, we're back with more goodies in a moment. Back, what happened when push came to shove quite literally in Vegas between Mike Tyson and Francois Botha? For the latest, we head to the MGM where Brian Kenny heads up our coverage. 18 months after being disqualified for biting the ears of Evander Holyfield, Mike Tyson comes back and he is in a foul filled mess against Francois Botha, but does knock him out in the fifth round. Al, we expected a lot more from Mike Tyson with his new training team headed by Tommy Brooks. There's an old adage in show business that says, when somebody gets a standing ovation, it's hard to criticize them. Well, Mike Tyson got a fifth round one punch knockout, but you still have to criticize him. He didn't do what Tommy Brooks uh, said he was going to do. They worked on it, jabbing his way in, throwing combinations, being the old Mike Tyson. I thought Tyson would show us some signs of 
of that. He didn't, but he still bailed himself out with power when Franz Botha got very careless. John, we were saying during the fight, we've really never seen Mike Tyson so slow with his hand speed in combination. There's a reason for that, Brian. That's because Botha was fighting a perfect textbook fight, and he ripped one of the pages out of Buster Douglas's win way, way back in 1990 in Tokyo. He was using the jab, giving Tyson a little lateral movement. When Tyson would lunge forward, he would grab him and tie him up. He was frustrating Tyson. And I think I now know why Mike Tyson says he only wants to fight four times in 99 and retire. I think Mike Tyson sees the end of the road. It's here. Let's take a look at some highlights right now. Francois Botha versus Mike Tyson. Botha coming in looking tight. Mike Tyson a little nervous, too, as well. Again, coming back after a year and a half layoff. Pick it up in round number one, and immediately we've got trouble. Watch the right hand of Mike Tyson, a little arm bar on Francois Botha. He had both his arm in a way that looked like he was trying to break it. And guess what? At the press conference afterward, they said, Botha said you were trying to break his arm. And Tyson said, he's correct. Well, Richard Steele, they tried to get between them. Tyson wouldn't let go of, the, of both his arm. Finally, they did get them apart, and the fight would go on. But a point would be deducted in the second round from Tyson when he did it one more time. And those, there's the two officials, Mark Ratner, the commission head here, and Richard Steele conferring on the matter. And indeed, a point would would be deducted in the second round. By the fourth round, Botha was so confident, he was literally toying with Tyson. No question, he was taunting Tyson to throw a punch. And Tyson, you see how gun-shy he is, trying to find a way to move in. We go into the faithful fifth round for Franz Botha. He's going to come out strong. Again, land that short right hand, over right hand, on Tyson's chin. Tyson continuing to grapple and hold on. As the fifth round progressed, though, it would be Mike Tyson that would find that Sunday home run punch and end the fight. He did get careless. Watch this. Franz Bolt, a little sweet P. Whitaker, but he's not Bernal Whitaker. He's a lot bigger than that. He doesn't have that skill, and it would be Mike Tyson showing a vintage short right hand again. We've got this video provided by Showtime, so this is all you get to see the very end of the fight where Mike Tyson does, in a classy manner, come over to Franz Botha and try to pick him back up, apologizing to him at the end of the fight as well picking up the man he had just knocked out in the fifth round. Mike Tyson now 46 and three. Still, by the way, unbeaten in non-championship bouts, but struggling against a man who had fought only two legitimately ranked heavyweights. A spectacular ending, but an ugly bout. Mike grabbed my, my arm and he was trying to, to break my arm, you know, like twist my arm. And uh, I was telling the Riff, I said, Riff, you know, he's trying to break my arm. It almost looked like you were trying to break his arm there. No, he got rough with me, so I got rough back. I can't remember everything I said to him, but, you know, I was trying to psych him out, tell him, you know, everybody's watching you, you, you gotta, you gotta start, start fighting because you're losing. Uh, <laughs> These guys gonna press every button that you got, man. They gonna, they gonna jerk you, you know. Uh, so don't play the game, man. Go along with the program. But he did lose his cool, especially back, at the end of the first round. To, yeah, he came back to the corner. He said, this guy's trying to bump me. Just, look, you knock the guy out, you got nothing to worry about, you know. I did as much as he could tell me. I did as much as I could do, that he told me. And I'll get better. I said, to him, listen, I was laid off for two years. What do you expect? We're working on it. We'll get better. It's just the first fight. I just walked into the punch. I mean, Mike threw a punch. And we all know Mike's got a lot of power. He's probably one of the hardest hitters in boxing. And uh, I just walked into the punch, you know, a, a punch that you don't see. And that's a punch that hurt me. Let's take a look at the official scorecards. Judge Bill Graham first, and of the 12 rounds scored by all three officials, only one round scored for Mike Tyson, and that one was scored by Bill Graham. Of course, a point deducted in that second round. Dave Moretti's scorecard had it pretty much the way we had our unofficial scorecard here, where it would be 40 to 35. Francois Botha outpointing the former undisputed heavyweight champion. Finally, Dalby Shirley, his card, same deal, 40 to 35. Pretty stunning turn of events. Alan. It really is. You know, one thing you have to say, and Tyson made the point he's coming back after a long layoff you expect ring rust but the trouble is when mike tyson fights he doesn't fight over in poughkeepsie new york in a little tune-up fight he fights in front of the whole world and all his ring rust was there it was not a good performance by mike tyson but we have to say this he kept saying i knew i was going to knock this guy out whether he did i don't know but he got it done and john when we look and we talk about who could be next for mike tyson well i think that list got a little smaller he really can't really move up the way he performed tonight well tyson's gonna have to fight somebody that he can beat and tonight I think it was a good job of spin control by Shelly Finkel's advisor and Tyson and Tommy Brooks to say 
We had this guy where we wanted him. Uh, we had him boxing. He was adjusting. Mike Tyson was really doing nothing of the sort until Franz Botha got careless. He made that big mistake that we said before the fight he couldn't afford to make. And that was the difference. And Al, we were very worried at the beginning. At least I was. I thought this fight would not continue. I mean, it, you have to wonder now, could Mike Tyson fight a clean fight? You know, the one nightmare that we all did not want to see happen for the sake of boxing and for the Nevada Commission, poor Mark Ratner has been through this so many times, time after time, was to see some terrible controversy that would end this fight early. And I'll tell you, at the end of that first round, when Tyson wouldn't let go of both, and when it was clearly obvious he was trying to injure him before that, we thought this was going to be another strange night for boxing. It was a little weird, but it did end at least with a fight ending on a punch for a change. John, do you think time has caught up to him? He's already made one comeback, as he had mentioned here at the press conference, saying, hey, I was in prison, I came back. Now this is after another year and a half layoff. He'll be 33 in the summertime. Has it caught up to him? Mike Tyson's a short heavyweight. He's getting to be an older heavyweight. He's getting to be a e very easy target. Anybody with a good left hand, with a little bit of lateral movement, who can box and take a shot. Franz Botha tonight could not take that kind of a punch from Mike Tyson. That was the difference in the fight. I think Mike Tyson senses, Brian, that the end is near. But Mike Tyson does end victoriously against Francois Botha. One shot right hand and it was all over for both of Mike Tyson a winner again here in Las Vegas I'm Brian Kenny for John Saracino and Al Bernstein we send it back to the studio it was indeed a wild night in Las Vegas the return of Mike Tyson and Mike Tyson knocking out Francois Botha in the fifth round here at the MGM Grand Hi, everybody. Brian Kenny here back in Las Vegas. We did see two signs of the old Mike Tyson, and that's just about it. The one right hand that knocked out Francois Botha, and then Mike Tyson rushing to the aid of his fallen victim. Let's bring in John Saracino and Al Bernstein right now. What's next for Iron Mike Tyson? Boy, you put up some names out there, Al. David Tua, Hasim Rahman, Michael Grant. Mike Tyson beat a lot of trouble if he got in there with those guys, the type of fighter he was tonight. Boy, would he ever. And that's probably the reason why we won't see any of those young Lions in with the ring with Tyson the next time out. They have a very difficult task trying to find Tyson's next opponent. They have to find someone marketable enough to sell a fight, and we don't know how well this one sold on pay-per-view. But this next opponent has to be someone maybe doesn't punch so well, a guy that Tyson can get to, and maybe even a guy that just doesn't have the ladder removing and the boxing skills to make Tyson look bad. It's going to be tough to find that guy. John, Mike Tyson said in the press conference very humbly that, hey, I'm just getting back. I'm gone a long time. Do you see him getting better at this age? Well, not at this point, but you know what? They keep talking about rust, ring rust with Mike Tyson. I see a corroded Mike Tyson. I see Mike Tyson being a shot fighter at this point in his career. Now, the camp's not going to like that, obviously, but Mike Tyson, I don't know if he can get back to the point where he's trying to go. I don't know if Tommy Brooks can do the kinds of things to get Mike Tyson back to that point where he was in the 1980s. There is, of course, a heavyweight unification bout of Andrew Holyfield and Lennox Lewis in March. That at Madison Square Garden. Suddenly, Al, that fight looks much, much grander. Yes, indeed. We knew it was a good fight, and we knew it was a fight that fight fans wanted to see. But there may have been some people out there that still harbored the idea that Mike Tyson was the best heavyweight, but a heavyweight in waiting. Well, even if you accept Tyson's view of tonight, that he was rusty, and then maybe eight months down the road, he will be back to where he needs to be. We know that right now, Lewis and Holyfield are the two best heavyweights on the planet, and that's what that fight is all about, and those are the implications of that fight, John. And here's the good news for Tyson. As long as they can match him soft in the next six months, they can keep him unbeaten and still preserve that third fight with Evander Holyfield. That is a huge money fight for Mike Tyson. I think that's why he came back for this last shot. I think he'll get it, and I think it'll be over. Of course, if that's if Mike Tyson does get back into the ring. First, though, his legal problems. He awaits sentencing in Maryland on the no, on the assault charges in which he pled no contest to. After that, that could be a violation of his probation in Indiana. As we go away, some images of fight night in Las Vegas. The ugliness of it early. Later, the devastation of Tyson late. Mike Tyson wins by knockout. That's it from Las Vegas. I'm Brian Kenny for John Saracino and Al Bernstein. We send it back to the studio. But we began with uh, fighting, and anytime you know Mike Tyson's in the ring, you know it's not going to be boring. No, Mike left us with the bite, and almost 19 months later, he takes us through another unlikely ride. He was actually losing to Franz Bota when he caught him with a short right hand in the fifth round to win by knockout. But before the KO, we almost saw the Tyson rage unravel the former champ once again. With the complete breakdown, we turn it over to our team in Las Vegas, beginning with Vince Cellini. Vince? Well, anything is possible in boxing, but imagine Francois both uh, battling overconfidence during his fight with Mike Tyson and Tyson having to rally to win. 
Both happened in the ring at the MGM Grand before Tyson came up with a fifth round knockout. No one really knew what to expect as Tyson made his way back to boxing for the first time in a little more than a year and a half. Tyson took to the ring. He wanted to get busy early with this fight. He wanted to end things early and be very impressive. But instead, this thing lingered. And in fact, Tyson was behind on all cards heading into round five. Mike Tyson came in and near the end of the first round, more bizarre activity. Tyson locks in Bolta's left arm. There was an audible scream from Bolta. He told Richard Steele, he's trying to break my arm. Tyson said later he was. A near melee at the end of the round, and Mike Tyson was close to being disqualified and maybe seeing his career go up in smoke. But then, in round five, Bolta got cute. He got overconfident, kept dropping his hands, stuck his chin out, and just walked into a right hand, and that was it for Francois Bolta. Mike Tyson getting the fifth round knockout. Joining me now, Steve Farhood, our boxing analyst and senior correspondent, Nick Charles. And uh, again, Mike Tyson did what he had to do in this one, and uh, he could have destructed for good in round one, but instead rallied in round five. Vince, that easily could have been the end of Mike Tyson's career in that first round. He somehow kept his cool. Imagine if he had compounded the problem with the ear with Holyfield by breaking Franz Botha's arm. It would have been incredible. Um, as for the fifth round, now you know why we love heavyweights. Tyson erases <laughs> four dreadful rounds with one beautiful, short, perfect punch. Extends his career. Well, Vince, it was incomprehensible to me, fellas. When I saw what happened at the end of that first round, I said, what is this guy doing? He not only flirted with disaster, he was moments away from drowning. Stacy McKinley, in his corner, told me after the fight that Richard Steele, the referee, came over and said, I'm going to DQ your man if that happens again. That set the alarm bell off in Mike Tyson, and he cleaned up his act and got the knockout. But once again, after the, afterwards, I talked with both fighters. Franz Botha said the defeat hurt even worse once I told him that he was ahead on all scorecards, but he got careless and admitted it. As for Mike Tyson, he said he wanted to shine, but there's work to be done. First, praise be to Allah. I like to um, say happy birthday to Custom Motto. Birthday's tomorrow. I like to give out um, love quotes to people that's deceased, that's deceased in my hometown of Brooklyn. Ark Bark, um, LD, and my brother Tweety. One love. Go ahead. How are you feeling right now, Mike? Um, and rusty. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How frustrated were you early? Not at all. Um, it's just a matter of time. He couldn't hurt me, and just a matter of time. I had to warm up. Talk to my trainer. He'd tell well, you. But what happened after the first round, Mike? Um, Tommy! I mean, you were, Richie I know, came over and said that he was going to DQ you. That's okay, but um, he was being rough with me. I was being rough back. Well, did he talk and trash to you in the ring? Oh, yeah. He was what was he saying? Like, um, just um, obscenity. I don't feel like saying it because then I'm a bad guy because I'm a repeat obscenity. <laughs> Mike, what did you learn about yourself tonight in terms um, of patience or maybe another battle plan if things weren't working? Mental toughness, how to ride out, you know, the confidence factor that things weren't uh, working early? I got to get back in the gym. I'm okay, but I'll get better. Okay, Mike. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Listen, how many people you know could go in prison, come out and win a the title, then take a, um, 18 months, close to two years off, and come back and do sensational against the number two world contender. Can't, can't name any right now. But. All right, say that on television. I really believe that I was, like, in, in full control of a fight, but, you know, I got cocky. Uh, I shouldn't have left down my guard so much. I, I really believe that, you know, I was, you know, he just called me with a punch, and, 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 and I, you know, I told everybody before that, you know, I was going to catch him with a phantom punch, and he just, he just turned the boards on me, you know. It's the punch you don't see that turns the lights yeah. out, huh? That's it, and that's what I, I got caught with, uh, and, uh, you know, take nothing away from Mike. We know he's a great puncher, and uh, I just, you know, it's just a shame, uh, like, you know, I was ahead, and, and even now that you're telling me, you know, it's, 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 it's actually breaking my heart, but, you know, he's, we're, we're happy that Mike's back because uh, boxing need him. S speaking of that, you said... He tried to break my arm, but other than that, he's a great guy. <laughs> well, you know, I believe, you know, he's, he, Mike's had a lot of problems in the past, uh, especially the past year. Um, it's really, you know, I, I was trying to, I was going to do the same thing. I mean, you know, when he, when he grabbed my hand and I told, I told everybody before, you know, if he bites me, I bite back. I, was, I wasn't letting him gonna just walk over me. And uh, it's just a shame, you know, that I, that I couldn't go, go, go the, the, the last few rounds because I knew that I was winning the fight. Well, the roughhouse tactics were working for Bolta for a while, but Tyson, again, keeping his cool and, and getting the knockout. What does this mean for Mike Tyson's future now, Steve? Well, the ride continues with Mike Tyson. Every fight is a, a new chapter in this incredible story. I think he'll be back in April, probably here at the MGM. My guess for an opponent would be Axel Schultz. That's the word. The big fight, of course, would be Holofield 3. 
but Holyfield has to get by Lennox Lewis in March, so we have to put that on hold. I have a sneaking suspicion that somewhere along the line, the definitive fight for Tyson this year might end up being Andrew Galata. What does this mean, Nick? In spin control, I think Tyson said, look, I bided my time. I was able to be patient. He did show me patience here, but the Tyson of old would have walked through Franz Botha. And that's the alarming thing for him. His self-assurance still isn't there, and the rust he hasn't shaken off. It's very apparent he's still got a long way to go with a new trainer. And I'm not saying he's going to put all these new things together, but what else is in his arsenal? We know he still arguably has the most powerful punch in boxing, and that's what makes, as you said, that's the beauty of the heavyweight, Steve. He reached back in his reserve, he knocked off the rust, and then he knocked out Francois Botha at 2.59 of round five. For Nick Charles and Steve Farhood, I'm Vince Gellini in Las Vegas. Let's send it back to Atlanta. And one more twist to this. A humorous Mike Tyson in the post-fight press conference just dealing out the one-liners. Among them, he dubbed Francois Bota the white Muhammad Ali.